It's one of the largest and oldest universities in Georgia. News Channel 6's Kim Vickers found out even more about its Somerville campus in this morning's hometown history. Good morning, Kim. Well, hey, Barkley, good morning. Augusta University's Somerville campus has roots with several other schools and organizations, but the campus as we know it today began with the U.S. military. The original arsenal for the United States, which had been recommended by George Washington in his tour in 1791, was built over on the river. Dr. Leanne Caldwell is a former history professor at Augusta University and is now the university's historian. She tells me that the Augusta Arsenal was part of Augusta for more than 130 years. It was built on the Savannah River in 1819, but 10 years later was moved to the Somerville neighborhood. But they realized that being on the river, especially in the summer seasons, was not particularly healthy. They didn't understand mosquitoes causing disease, but they knew if you got up on the hill where there were more breezes and, and fewer mosquitoes, mosquitoes that people seem to be healthier. The U.S. government bought 72 acres of land known as Bellevue and moved the arsenal brick by brick. Freeman Walker and his family sold this land to the United States government for the arsenal. Um, they kept an acre for the family cemetery and they moved the Walker house to Bellevue and, and this became a working arsenal. Stacy Thompson is the director of the Guardhouse Museum. She says many of the buildings built for the arsenal are still standing and still in use by AU. Um, but as you kind of walk through, you go to the quad, right, and you can see all of these original buildings where the enlisted men would have had their barracks, there was the headquarters, and then of course um, Benet Hall that we know now um, was the Commandant's home. The guardhouse, which now houses the museum, was built much later. This building was built right after the Civil War during Reconstruction in 1866. Uh, the Augusta Arsenal really needed some heightened security, of course, after this time period. And so um, we found some interesting things here. Um, lots of liquor bottles underneath <laughs> the floors. There's a common misconception about one of the buildings on campus. Bellevue Hall is another building um, that some think that is older than the Arsenal, but is not. Um, but that was built by the Arsenal uh, for the Galt family originally. The Arsenal exchanged hands at the beginning of the Civil War. In January of 1861, the United States troops that were here surrendered the Arsenal. And this was, for the four years of the Civil War, a Confederate arsenal. Um, and we do have a Confederate building, one of the few we know that exist, that was built by the Confederates in the Quadrangle, uh, and it's still there. One very famous, or in the South infamous, Civil War general was stationed at the Augusta Arsenal for a time before the war, General William T. Sherman. Myth says he skipped Augusta on his trek burning cities throughout Georgia because a woman he loved lived here. The arsenal remains active through many wars in U.S. history, including World War II and housed German prisoners of war. In fact, um, people in Somerville uh, reported that they would sometimes come and, you know, do work for them uh, in their garden. Um, there were German and Italian prisoners of war. The, most of the Italians were out at Camp Gordon. Um, some of the Germans were here. Many families lived on the property. Octavia Walton LeVere, daughter of George Walton, one of the founding fathers of the United States, was born at Walker House before the arsenal was built there. She was an American socialite and writer. Someone even mentioned to me, they said, oh, she's like the Kardashian of her time. Uh, but she um, traveled all over, published a book about her travels in Europe, and um, and actually like retired here. Another famous name who lived at the Arsenal when he was a child was poet Stephen Vincent Benet. And when his father was stationed here, they lived in what we now know as Benet Hall um, because Commandant Benet uh, had, had, had a long military history, right? And so um, Stephen was the youngest and he went to the Academy of Richmond County and he would write his first poetry under the Arsenal Oak, and we actually have his typewriter in our special collection, which is a lot of fun. Benet went on to win a Pulitzer Prize for his poem, John Brown's Body. The tree he wrote under, the Arsenal Oak, was a very old, very large white oak tree located at AU until 2004. It had to be removed because it was dying and becoming a hazard. 
A tree grown from an acorn from the Arsenal Oak was planted outside of Benet Hall. Now, there are wonderful pictures of students, you know, 20 or 30 students up in the various branches of Arsenal Oak. Arsenal Oak was, um, it, it was kind of an iconic piece of the campus. In 1955, the arsenal closed and the property was given to the Georgia Board of Education. The Junior College of Augusta moved there in 1957. Before that, it was part of the first high school in Georgia and is the sixth oldest high school in the U.S., none other than the Academy of Richmond County. There was a sense that we have got to have more education in our country because we're not going to be educating people as lords to be in the House of Lords. We, we're going to elect people, but we also are going to need a population, and of course they're talking about white men at the time, but we're going to need people to be educated enough that they can make intelligent decisions to vote. The Academy of Richmond County was opened back in 1783. It was a college preparatory school for boys. That same year, a university system of public schools and a capstone college was established by the state legislature. And we know when George Washington came through in 1791, he sat in on the oral examinations uh, at Richmond Academy and heard an address by a young man who had actually graduated the year before but was doing a, a, an extra year there. So they had, almost from the beginning, uh, there was off and on this extra year of basically college. In 1925, ARC moved to its current location and the Junior College of Augusta, officially chartered the same year, went with it. But before long, as enrollment increased, it became apparent that the junior college needed its own space. The accrediting agency had said in the early 50s, it's too crowded, and they knew they needed to move the junior college. Uh, and so when this property became available in uh, 1955, they started negotiating um, to get the property for the Junior College of Augusta. Junior College of Augusta was a two-year college from 1925 until 1963 when the school's fifth president, Gerald Burns Robbins, led it into some big changes, including a new name. And they started calling it Augusta College. Uh, and then in the 1960s, when Augustan Carl Sanders was the governor of Georgia, uh, he made the college a four-year institution. The University System of Georgia under the Board of Regents took control of Augusta College from the Richmond County Board of Education. When George Christenberry became president, he added 240 acres in the Forest Hills neighborhood where the athletic complex was later built. Then, nearly 40 years after becoming Augusta College, a new name changed, Augusta State University. Under President William Bloodworth's administration, the college was approved for funding for a new science building. Then, in 2013, Augusta State University merged with Georgia Health Sciences University, also known as MCG, and the name changed again. And it got the name Georgia Regents University, which was very unpopular in Augusta. Dr. Ricardo Aziz was president at the time of the name change. The public was asked to vote on new names for the university, and the top three were released with the notion one of those would be the new name. There was a loud public uproar after the Georgia Regents University was chosen, in part because it wasn't on the list at all and because Augusta wasn't part of the name. Many Augustans withheld funds because of it. Aziz resigned two and a half years later and Dr. Brooks Keel took the helm. And when Dr. Keel came, the name was changed once again to uh, Augusta, this time University. No state in it, just Augusta University, which I think made Augustans very happy and has proved to be a good move uh, because people recognize the name Augusta all over the world. <laughs> Certainly once a year they know who we are. And that's just part of your hometown history. Barkley.